What's up, dude? So I break down a lot of animations and interactions on this channel, and really I just pick stuff that I think is cool and interesting and that I think you guys will think is cool and interesting, but I don't talk a lot about context of animations. What I mean by that is creating animations that actually serve a purpose for explaining how something works on a website as opposed to just looking pretty. And one awesome example of that that I've actually broken down before, but not yet on YouTube, is this animation by Mona Sands, or by GitHub on their Mona Sands landing page. Now Mona Sands is a variable font, which I could explain to you what that means, or I could just show you this animation. So you start with this very thin font weight, and then as you mouse over one of their fonts, it smoothly interpolates between this very thin font weight and a very thick font weight. It doesn't chunk up between like a font weight of 100 to a font weight of 500, then 700 and then 900, because that would look very clunky. What this is showing you is, hey, this font has hundreds of different possible font weights that you can choose from. And they're telling you that by showing you that, not just telling you that, which is awesome. This is a perfect use of interactions. That said, I don't know if any of you guys are going to be making a variable font anytime soon. Um, maybe you are, I don't know your life, but we're gonna look at how this effect works today. So this is my basic little example of this. We're going to be breaking this down using CSS. I'm also gonna be using React and a little bit of Tailwind, but honestly, you can ignore all of that stuff. I'll just show you how to work around it if you're not using that same tech stack. On my website, in the link in the description, you'll be able to grab all the code for this. Just remember that there are two little files up here if you wanna grab it. And I also have another version that doesn't use any CSS and just uses JavaScript and event listeners if you wanna play around with that as well. But uh, yeah, let's look at some code. The first thing that I wanna mention is obviously that this is going to look better if you're actually using using a variable font. So feel free to use Mona or Hubo Sans, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Uh, that's gonna give you something that looks exactly like the original. For me, I'm gonna use a font called Poppins. Font Poppins is a free Google font. The reason I'm doing that, to be entirely honest with you, is just because it's already what I had set up on my website and I didn't wanna have to load an extra font uh, on my website where you're gonna go and download this code if you want, just for this one example. So I'm using Poppins, also a variable font. There's a bunch of other variable fonts on Google fonts and all over the web. So grab whichever one that you want that you think looks good. Now I'm using React instead of just normal HTML. We're not gonna be doing any React specific stuff. If you're just using HTML, pretend like everything that is you know, outside of this H2 does not exist. I guess there actually is one kind of React specific thing that we'll be doing, but uh, not for the actual animation, just for the markup. So. I will tell you how to not, or how to get around that piece as well. Now, if we look over at the original example again, and just think about how this animation is gonna work, zoom in a little bit. And the first thing that we're gonna notice is that whenever we hover over one letter, it gets bigger, and then it kind of cascades out to the right and to the left, right? So the challenge here is going to be, how do we animate just one letter at a time? And then how do we animate their siblings? So both to the right and to the left. So let's kind of tackle those one piece at a time. I'm gonna zoom out, go back over to our original code. First things first, we need to be able to animate or select and style individual letters, right? Which we can't do just with a string of text in here like this, but we can if we break up our string of letters into individual elements like spans. So we say maybe B, U, B, et cetera, et cetera, until we have our entire sentence, whatever we wanna be animating here. We then will also need to go through each of them and then actually give them some kind of class or class name. I'm in React, so it's going to be class name is equal to, say, hover text is the class name that I've been using for this example. And if you're doing this in just normal HTML, I would just follow the same pattern. I would just go through and I would write a class name for each one and then write a span for each one and continue going down that path because we are in React though, I can actually get away with doing a quick little trick that's gonna be a little more flexible than having to write each one manually. And I'm just gonna actually drop that in really quick, click save. And what I'm doing here instead is I'm taking our little string of text, I'm splitting it into an array, and then I'm dynamically creating a span element for each letter in our string. And what this lets me do is just change our string to whatever I want, and it's immediately going to update without me having to actually change anything. I will note that I'm using CSS modules instead of normal CSS. So if you're wondering why this looks like this, and this doesn't look like this, like a normal class name, it's just the style of CSS that I'm using. If you're just using your, your normal kind of CSS imports or whatever, just do it like this. But for me, I'm using CSS modules and I need to define those in this kind of object syntax like this. So I'm gonna leave that as is. And this is actually everything that we need for the markup. All that you need is some kind of text that is rendering a number of spans that each individually can be selected. And we can actually get to the, the CSS now. So let's break this down into the first kind of easiest piece of this, which is probably just animating one letter at a time. So whenever I hover over one letter, I want it to get 
bigger and I want it to change color. So easy enough, right? All that we need to do that is to select one of our items. So say hover text. And whenever we hover on one of our hover text classes, I want to change the font weight to 900. And I want to change the color to this color that I'm going to copy from my old example because I don't want to try and rewrite this RGB and get it wrong and get angry. So let's try that. Go back over to our original example and hover over one of these letters and we should now see that it's doing what we want it to do. So it's getting thick and it's changing in color. Now it's not animating because we haven't actually defined a transition for it yet. That's an easy enough fix. We'll come up here and say hover text. And now we're actually styling every element with the same class on it. And we want to style the, or we want to define the transition times. I say 0.35 seconds. And all that we care about transitioning are the font weight and the color. So we'll say 0.35 seconds font weight, 0.35 seconds color. And we should now see that this actually animates. So as I hover over this, it doesn't just jump up in size. It actually smoothly interpolates to that size. Cool, so that kind of breaks down the first two steps. So the first one was just chunking this all into individual items. The second one was animating the item that we're actively, or the letter that we're actively hovering. The next part is going to be animating anything to the right of whatever we're animating. There's kind of two chunks to this. There's gonna be animating anything to the right, and then anything to the left. And fortunately, animating anything to the left is kind of just an extension of animating anything to the right. So we'll start with right and then we'll move forward from there. Now the easiest way to animate anything that comes after something else in the DOM is using what's called the sibling selector. So I'm actually gonna copy at least this selector that we have right here, open that up. And in order to animate something one step or n number of steps to the right of our active element in the DOM is just using the sibling selector, which is just a plus, and then whatever element you want to style. So we'll say, hover text again, because all of our elements have the same class on them. Now, this is kind of confusing, I think, when, the, when you first look at it. I think hovering over this might make this make a little bit more sense. So what we're actually styling is any element with the class of hover text, which is immediately after an element that is being hovered that also has the class of hover text. In this context, that is any element to the right, but it really just means anything that comes after it in the DOM, so it could be below it or whatever it might be. I think if I actually add some styles to this, you'll be able to see it and it might make a little bit more sense. We actually wanna change the font weight to, we'll say 500. And then I'm gonna copy the color on over as well. Drop that in there. And now we should see that as we hover over one letter, the item immediately to the right of it, its sibling immediately after it in the DOM is being animated as well. Now the cool thing about this is you can just continue to chain these on top of each other. So if I grab all of this, and then I say plus hover text, and then plus hover text again, it's going to grab the third item, or two down from whichever one we're actively hovering. For this one, I'm just gonna remove our color, oops, for this one I'm just gonna remove our color right here, and I'm gonna change the font weight to 300. Now we should see that whenever we hover one element, the one two to the right of it is also animating as well. All of this, of course, is just gonna follow you around. So as you move your mouse around, it'll just continue animating like that. And now we get to the even more fun part, which is everything to the left of wherever our cursor is. Now, the first thing that you might think, having seen what we just did right here, is that you can just do like a minus selector or something. It's like, cool, if plus goes to the right, then minus should go to the left, right? And unfortunately, that is not true. But what we do have access to is something called the has selector. I'm gonna pull up the MDN docs for that really quick because I think they'll probably explain it better than I will. And what we'll actually see here is that the example they're using is almost exactly, or it really is exactly what we wanna be doing here. So if we look right here, let me bump this up a little bit. At their example, we'll say that something like this where you have H1 has plus P selects an H1 heading with a paragraph element that is immediately following the H1 and applies these styles to the H1. So what we can do here instead is say, hey, any letter that has a sibling one kind of step away, which is actively being hovered, we can style with whatever we pass into this styles. I'm gonna close this back up a little bit and jump on over to our local host again. Looking at that in action is going to look something like this. So we're gonna say any hover text that has oops, that has a sibling, which is using the same kind of sibling selector syntax as we used a second ago, dot hover text, which is actively being hovered. 
So there's going to be anything to the left of what is immediately being hovered now. And we'll style that in the same way as the way that we styled the one to the right. We can go ahead and see if that works. So I will hover over one of these letters now. And yes, there we go. So the element to the left of where I'm hovering is now styled as well in the exact same way as the one to the right. And this can be chained on exactly like your other sibling selectors were being chained on. So I'm just gonna take this, all of this same code and go down one more line. I'm gonna change this so that we're moving the font weight to 300. And all that I have to do is chain on one more hover text here. Oops, so yeah, something like plus dot hover text. And this is going to select two to the left of whatever we're actively hovering. Give that a shot, I'll hover over my B here, and yes, so now two to the right and two to the left are both styled, and as I move my mouse around, it continues to just kind of bubble to wherever my mouse is. All of the code for this again is on my website. If you just come under components and then go to other, scroll down a little bit, you should see it. It's called bubble text right here. Just click on code up here in the corner and you can grab this in exactly the same way as we just built it, as well as a couple of other versions using JavaScript or using a more React and like JavaScript type stuff and TypeScript. There's a bunch of other cool components on this website as well that are all animated and interactive and stuff. So if you wanna go and play around with those, I would really appreciate it. If you learned anything here, a like and a subscribe also is always appreciated. But uh, anyways, that'll be it for now. I will see you guys next time. Peace.